You're listening to the Arisha Wisdom Podcast, Session 6. Welcome to the Arisha Wisdom Podcast, where positivity and spirituality create an enhanced life's journey with the wisdom of Ifa and Arisha. I am your host, Iya Omileti Olubuni. Thank you so much for tuning in to the Arisha Wisdom Podcast on this bonus session. It will be a short one, I promise. Maferefung Oshun, as her inspiration hit yesterday, and today I just had to share this with you. Today's topic is Recipe for Abundance in the Arisha Traditions. And with that, let's dive right in. Who doesn't want some extra money in their pockets? I know I do. Do you have kids that grow like weeds? I have a little one right now that is outgrowing every single pair of pants that he has and they fit like high waters and they he's just growing and I don't know how I'm going to be able to clothe this kid at the rate that he's growing. How many times have you been to an Orisha event and I am raising my hand. I know you can't see me, but I'm raising my hand. You're at an event. Someone is ringing the bell and on your behalf if you're not initiated and you are like, thank you for all the blessings that I have and I ask for abundance and more money and a new job. And I even heard someone ask for a vacation. Now, there's nothing wrong with that, but I heard it. And since we're going to talk about abundance, we're going to go into how to get those things. As you know, Orisha Wisdom has three core values. One is community, one is positivity, and one is empowering tools. Today, short bonus episode is going to be about positivity. Abundance. Abundance comes from the universe. Giving. It's either abundance is coming to you or to me or to the guy down the street. It's going somewhere. It's an energy. You'll hear that a lot. Everything in this tradition, everything in life really is an energy exchange. Yesterday, on my way home, I was listening to a podcast by James Wedmore. I don't remember the episode name, but I will post a link to it on the show notes. And he speaks about abundance, and it comes with a few steps. I am only going to give one here because I think this one is going to be key. It's actually two, but they're all linked together into one. And it is to give freely. But here is the little twist to it. You have to give freely without expecting anything in return. Basically, okay, so I am going to give to XYZ charity and I'm giving it because I am going to now be abundant. It it cannot be given that way. It has to just be given freely. For example, if you're in a city or a big place with lots of folks, have you given money to a homeless person? Yes? Doesn't it feel good? Like, you know, maybe he'll get himself a warm coffee or something to eat. You don't expect it back, right? No, you just give it and that's it. So he talks about giving to charities and not expecting anything back, and that that is a key to abundance. And I'm like, what? Sometimes I just don't have it. And I'm going to tell a story later on on what happened when I, (laughs) what happened to me personally. Let's get a little bit deeper into this exchange of energy and how this applies to us within our faith. So, We need that job, right? So we go to Arisha and we ask for it. 
We need that extra money. And we ask for that. We need that place item, you know, name of whatever it is that you need that resembles abundance here, and you ask for it. Just like you're asking for that job, someone has to give it to you. Just like you need that extra 20 bucks that it's somewhere on the street, it's someone's money. Someone is going to give you that opportunity for you to get that abundance. Now, I have the twist. Why not ask yourself, how can I make my eguns and my orishas proud by being someone else's abundance? Why not ask, how can I give back instead of, I want, I need, I must have. Why not we give first? And there's a million ways. I'll mention a few. Do you volunteer in your community? You got kids? Do you volunteer as a family? Go with your kids. There are actual links online. I know because I did this. I Googled because I love Google. Volunteer opportunities for families in where I live. Do you donate to a charity? Do you donate regularly? No? If you really look at it, money is just paper. It really is. Money, if you burn it, it will give give off some heat and maybe provide ashes, but that's about it. It's what it can do that is important. It has that energy and it needs to be moved around. When I heard James Wedmore speaks, he speaks of money kind of like a pond. In a pond, the water will get in, it'll rain and all that stuff, but it doesn't move. It becomes stagnant. You would not want your puppy or your kids to play or drink in that water. Why? Because it's nasty. It hasn't moved around. It hasn't flowed. Now in river, I mean, people drink water out of many rivers. They play. We go swimming in it. It's fantastic. Think of money in that way. Money cannot just be hoarded. It has to be moved. It has to be put into some action, good action or bad action. But maybe it can do a job of being someone's abundance. Do you have a business? Have you thought of doing a campaign for your favorite charity? I don't know if you know, but I actually started a while ago doing Orisha things online with Olubumi Creations. And I remember one month I did a charity for violence against women. It was October. It was Women's Violence Awareness Month. So I put purple all over my website and I worked hard to try to give a percentage to that. And although that felt good, it wasn't enough, but I wasn't making and I still don't make gazillions of dollars. I just sell a piece of jewelry that is handcrafted every now and then. But I decided, you know what? I think consistency is more important. And this I decided last year where I decided that 10% of everything that Olubumi Creations made was going to go to futures without violence. I really don't like things that are when they're done in front of kids because it can totally shape you. But anyway, that is what I chose to do consistently as a small business, because consistency is what will gather. It's like Yamaya says, you know, the ocean was made drop by drop. So if I'm a drop of abundance to someone else who's also placing their drop, there will be a lot more abundance for many. Okay, so you don't have a business. 
do you participate in local activities that give back? And I don't mean just once a year. Like, do you guys kind of gather and try to see what you could do? Maybe help out a little school that provides things for children and they don't charge a lot of money. That means that they don't have a big budget to spruce up their yard so that the kids could play something. There are so many ways that we can give, not just of our time, but of our funds regularly. In order to have abundance, you must be someone else's abundance. How about that? You get to be the answer. You get to be someone who is someone's answer to their prayers. How awesome is that? It's like you're creating a flowing, abundant energy that cannot be ignored. And this is how I, I can explain it. Your ego, our ego, Orisha is watching us. They see our behavior. They see what emphasis we put. They see what is in our hearts. They see what we put out. And guess what? And you better believe this. They reward us when they deem fit. Think about that. So you decide that you're going to give $10 a month because that's all you can give to this charity. And then you decide, you know what? Um, I'm going to gather all my friends. All my kids are about the same size. They are growing all their stuff. I'm going to give this to this place because they can use it. They're watching and you're somebody else's answer. How amazing is that, that we are vessels that were put into this earth. And yes, you will hear me say this. We are all working hard to get to our destinies. And we still are mommies and daddies, brothers, sisters, workers. We have all those roles and we're still trying to make it to our destiny. But imagine if. We also are working hard to make an impact on this earth, a positive impact to bless it. Egung and Orisha will bless you when you become that blessing for someone else and don't stop. So remember that story that I promised earlier? Okay. I... Went with my kids and my niece a couple of years ago to this place and they were showing some exposition. I didn't know what it was, but it looked kind of cool. It was about seeing how other people live in other parts of the world. So I went and I took my kids and I took my niece and we all went. And it was a uh, exposition by Compassion.org. And what you do is that you walk through two living areas of two children in parts of the world who need help that they don't have regular things that you and I may have, like, I don't know, a door that closes, water, a safe place to sleep at. They do not have that. For me, the experience was amazing. My children, they give you these headphones and you walk through their bedroom, their kitchen, their living room, and they speak of how they live. And then, of course, there are pictures when you go outside and you can foster, I, I can't say foster, more like adopt one of them in any part of the world, boy, girl, age, and it tells you what the, you will be helping. So, of course, I was very moved I get very emotional that way. And I decided because I don't have any daughters that I'm going to adopt a little girl. And I did. And we were so happy. We took pictures and it was $38 a month. Now you, for you, this may be, that's nothing. But when you have a family and a lot of expenses, that $38 can sometimes get a little heavy. <laughs> and there are times I'm like, but that's the only thing I have left. I really have to stop donating. And I was going to, I was going to stop donating to compassion. And funny how things happen. In the mail, 
that week that I was thinking of cutting it came a picture and it was of her. And it's been, it's been over a year. Actually, I think it's two years now, almost two years. She's grown. She didn't look so sad. She's tall. She's filled in and it says all the things that she has done. And she has said she's learning to write and all of these things. And I said, you know what? 38 is sometimes a little much for me, but it means a heck of a whole lot to her and her family. And I will keep to make that sacrifice as long as I can. I want to help someone that probably would not have that opportunity. And this is just me. I'm not saying this to brag to you, but I'm saying that when you even think that you can't, you have no idea how much of an impact you are making, how much of a difference you are making. And then you're thinking, well, if I'm given all this money, where's my abundance? I've heard people ask that. <laughs> I really have. I'm asking you. There's many abundances that are around you right now. The air that you breathe. The water that you drink. Do you have a roof over your head? That's abundance. There's a lot of blessings that we have that we take for granted where in other parts of the globe, somebody just wishes that they had a cover on. And I believe that in our traditions, I, we have a bad rap as it is through bad media, bad press. I think it's about time that we as Alejos, Aborishas, and priests of these traditions that we shine as we are meant to be. Let's make our eggs proud. Let's be that light around the world that is needed. There's too much drama, too much hate, too many things. But when we are being somebody else's abundance, abundance just It has no choice but to come right back. So why not us be our community's abundance? Why not focus on how we can do this for someone else? Many days we squander the abundant blessings that are given to us. Now we have a chance. It's still the beginning of 2018. And if you're just catching up and it's after that, it's okay too. I'm just asking, let's live this day and every day and plan that abundance will come to us, but we have to be somebody else's abundance first. Let's make this recipe for abundance a common occurrence among us within the Ifa and Orisha traditions. You've reached the end of this bonus episode of the Orisha Wisdom Podcast, and I thank you for listening and hanging out with me. Has this episode inspired you? What plans will you make to be an abundance and a blessing to others? Please let me know, leave me a comment, or send me an email, or find me on social media. I'm basically everywhere at orishawisdom.com. For show notes and any links discussed here, please go to www.orishawisdom.com forward slash session six. I will leave all the links of all the charities mentioned and I will add one that James Wedmore suggested in his podcast at, as well. It is an amazing video of how one man has made it his mission to end water crisis in the world. And he feels that we can fix it in our lifetime. It is a short video. I watched it last night and it was amazing, moving and very well produced and very doable as well. So if you don't have a place that you trust or you don't know where to donate, 100% of all proceeds from this place goes 
directly to the charity and you can see where it goes. It's actually amazing. And if you want to check it out now and you don't want to wait for the notes, go to www.jameswedmore.com forward slash water. And of course, I will post all of the links. I will leave you with this. Let's go out there and make our Eguns and Orishas proud. Be blessed. And until next time, Odabo! Thank you for listening to the Orisha Wisdom Podcast. Be sure to check out the show notes at orishawisdom.com forward slash podcast. Can't get enough of Orisha Wisdom? Check us out at orishawisdom.com and subscribe to our community. Remember, the wisdom of Ifa and Orisha is all around us. Be blessed and until next time.